Governor Cuomo's daily press conferences were a whole new dimension in public education. He informed, he demanded, and he calmed people down. We have done a full 180. We wore masks, we socially distanced, we closed down, and we stopped the curve. I don't care. I'm not going to wear a mask when I'm outside. That's not the law. That's not the law. Okay, I have COVID. Help! 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 I have COVID. Help. I've been tested positive. Help. Get back here. Phil! <laughs> Jesus. Come on, Phil. My <laughs> God. Talk about case in point. Two more hogs got the fever. That's right, and Phil's one of them. <laughs> Oh man! Don't spit on people. So is Phil the pro mask person? I'm yes, he's the pro. This happened. is this is actually in the Fitchburg Sentinel Enterprise uh, <laughs> market area. This is in Ashburnham, Massachusetts, Ooh. at a at a park up there. Okay. And Phil and his wife uh, were wearing masks, and mm -hmm. two younger ladies were walking, hiking as well. And Phil saw them not wearing a mask, and he was not very pleased with that. And he took uh, umbrage immediately. They said essentially screw. He starts walking away, then he walks back. Phil is not uh, t taking this blow off, uh, t you know, lying down. You're not wearing a mask. I don't not care. I'm not going to wear a mask when I'm outside. That's not the law. That's not the law. <laughs> Good not for the you. Law. you. Call whoever you need to call and do whatever you need to do. Selfish is what it is. Completely Selfish. Impossible. Okay, thank you so much for your input. <laughs> so he comes back. He's not done. Okay, I have COVID. I have COVID. I have been tested positive. Phil is now spitting on everybody. Okay. No, you won't be soon. He's such a good person. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, he's such a good person. Um, hold on one second. Hold on. He's such a good person that uh, Phil is such a good and noble human being that he's he cares so much. He's a right good voter. He does everything that he's supposed to do. He has a, a, a hate has no home here yard sign. He's got all the stuff he's supposed to have. He, he changed his avatar in the summer for Black Lives Matter. And, um, and um, you know, he's such a good person that when he was just showing us his nobility and, you know, he, the, how incredibly elevated he was in a world full of immoral characters and less than ethical people, Phil is a really, really, really good person. So much show. He's so good that because you don't wear a mask up on a mountain in the mountain air, because if you don't wear a mask while well, he's showing you his virtue, he's so good that in order to show you, he has to spit on you. That's how good Phil is. He's that good that in so, so, um, you know, such a, a proper custodian of good morals and ethics and, and proper behavior that Phil also will be back by the way we've uh, got an emergency situation with the uh, child that uh, he spit on it's so perfect you know that guy we all know that guy who that guy is right there it's so perfect I don't care I'm not going to wear a mask when I'm outside it's not the law it's not the law Phil says you know, with his uh, L.L. Bean duck boots that's not you're not complying with state law. What are you freaking deputing? Who goes around talking telling people to comply with state law? Shut up. They're walking on a mountain. They don't have masks. You're not complying. First of all, the law is not that you have to wear a mask. There's no law passed that says everybody has to wear a mask going outside. That's not the law. Phil, lighten the frig up. God, I can't hand I can't stand people who don't even know why, other than the fact they have an opportunity to feel virtuous and better than you other than that he doesn't he phil doesn't know why or care about the mask thing he just knows that gives him a chance to to uh to judge you and when he's judging you 
he can feel really good about it. And his wife knows he does this, and he's got a thin skin, and he can't handle the fact that they were blowing him off. <clears throat> so now he had to go to the nuclear option and spit at them and show these two women, there you go, you don't... You're not going to comply by the law. You're not going to validate my uh, performance art here. Well, then I'm going to spit on you. It reminds me of, you know, I never, I don't understand this. I don't understand. I am a mostly law-abiding citizen. But I don't get this. I used to blow a lot of, especially when I, I lived in the, but we talk about Melrose, Massachusetts all the time. I used to blow a lot of red lights in Melrose only when there was no reason for us to be stopped at a red light. Uh, there's a couple of intersections there that took, took forever. And that's about, it, you, you've got the same thing in your town. Some lights just suck, but there's nobody around. There's nobody around. So my feeling was, when I was at the red light, that, like, wh why am I stopped here? It doesn't make any sense. There's nobody coming either way. I'm an adult. I have a finite amount of time on Earth. I can handle this responsibly. I'm going through. And I go through. And not because I'm a badass or anything why would i not go through i gotta go over there there's no reason not to go there i'm adult enough to make the decision that i understand usually the lights are good for for to create order and a process for everybody but i'm adult enough and smart enough to figure it out but there came a time when when i'd blow a light if there was somebody i'm stopped here at the four ways intersection i'm stopped here there's somebody on the other side of the intersection facing me stopped there I just remember the looks I would get from as I'd blow the light because there's nobody coming on either side. <laughs> People would go, what the? It'd be like a shaky heady because I broke because I broke the 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 government's uh, light rules that say you're not allowed to go forward on the lights because and it, because those are the rules of the government. You're just supposed to. What the heck? Come the government. T come on. What the heck? The government says you broke the law. I get that. I don't understand that. Like, there are people that, that like don't walk in intersections when a thing says don't walk, and if there's there's nobody there, and they just look at it. Uh, government, <laughs> tell, tell me when I can walk. Government, tell me that I can walk, please. Until then, I just won't. Even though there are no cars, so what the hell are you doing? The government is not God. <laughs> the government are, are elected and appointed bureaucrats, and rarely the best. I'll just wait. You tell me when I can do it. Okay, now it's time. Now we go. Jesus, I don't get. So anyway, Phil's one of those guys. Alice, you haven't gotten to hear the whole thing, but here's I'm gonna go play Phil from it. start okay. to finish. Good job, by the way, installing the uh, child uh, somewhere. James is reading him the owl book. Oh, good. Good. Unfortunately, it's a short book. You're not wearing a mask. I don't care. I'm not gonna wear law. a mask. State law, when Phil. When I'm outside. That's not the law. It's not the law. Good for you. You call whoever you need to call and do whatever you need to. Oh, do. he will. <laughs> Selfish is what it is. Completely irresponsible. Okay, thank you so much for your input. <laughs> and he allows himself even though he probably knows nothing about it. Is it selfish for them not to be wearing a mask in a mouth? No, it's not selfish. Nobody <laughs> it doesn't do anything to anybody. Right. Nobody knows if any any instances of this disease has been <laughs> trans transmitted on while hiking <laughs> nobody knows anything at all but phil has a reason to be a jerk and he's gonna take it <laughs> because he's a jerk he really naturally is a jerk but now he's doing it for a good cause it's just selfish it's just selfish phil's the selfish one in impeding on everybody's day wait you're not do you're not do it's the you're being selfish my goodness i can't that's Phil laughing, but he's not laughing. Phil is boiling inside. He's crying inside. Oh, he is angry. Here comes Phil coming back. He's had a he thought about this. Okay, I have COVID. I have COVID. I have been tested positive. You okay? No. You won't be soon. They're arrogant. Mm -hmm. He's a good person. <laughs> he spit his bile at them a moment ago and tried to scare them into thinking that he had COVID. Which still, if he spit at them, probably still wouldn't give them COVID. <laughs> probably They're not. bad people. 
regardless of his actions, he's a good person. Phil is just an older version of Antifa. He, if Antifa, if the twenty-year-old college kid can, you know, fill up a bottle with uh, urine and throw it at a cop's head because he knows he's a good person, mm-hmm. and it's a bigger cause, and so Phil knows. Phil's the justice, the Antifa of that mountain. He knows what a good person <laughs> he is. Oh, oh my God, Jesus! Have you ever been spit on, Alice? No, and I don't want to be. Uh, I think that's probably a good thing. <laughs> Um, I wasn't ever spit on. I did get there was a time in the in the nineties when I get a. I'm not going to go back to the. I'm not going to because you yelled at me for the all the nineties things yesterday I didn't and, yell and at the you. Gen X stuff. I didn't yell at you. I felt it was yelling. You were filled to me essentially. <laughs> um, there was a time when when I got a lot of drinks thrown at me from and I was not like I I don't think I'd have said anything really wrong, but there was a time like. Like the summer of like ninety four, for some reason, was get throw a drink at Tom <laughs> summer. And I remember um, one time he, that uh, seems like less unsanitary and disgusting though than no, I know. But I remember one time um, this young lady. This was in Woburn, Massachusetts. So I think we have some friends in Woburn. I was at this party in Woburn. Mm-hmm. Murph was there. Keith was there. You know, all the usuals. The guys from Winchester. We were there, and there were some young ladies. And uh, Keith's girlfriend at the time didn't like me. She had actually. She was responsible for breaking me up with my girlfriend from Somerville. She orchestrated the breakup and, oh. and nuked it. So I, said, I remember saying, it was a huge house party. I said something very rude to her at this house party. I said, I think you are not a nice person. But I didn't say not a nice person. I said, I said something that is not polite to call people and women. Okay. And is it a canine term? It was at least the canine term, possibly more. Um, so anyway, so I say this to this young lady, um, and she said, what? What did you just bleep and say? And I repeated it. Now the room goes quiet. <laughs> and she had her drink, was probably a beer, I assume, at that time, and threw it at my head. And I said, too bad you like missed and you ruined a good beer and ha, 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 ha in front of people and I was laughing and while I was laughing her friend from the grassy knoll <laughs> nailed me in the face with her with a drink bang wow and then a, and then a near rumble ensued <laughs> where people split off Murph who I grew up with joined the other team the other oh side oh my gosh everybody assumed correctly uh, that I was that you were deserving well no, well, everybody assumed correctly that I wouldn't be able to do my own fighting, so they had to like pick a designated <laughs> real fighter. But anyway, uh, I don't know why we talked about that. But don't get spit on is what. I'm, oh yeah, I, okay. spitting is disgusting, and I think um, it can possibly, in some context, be considered assault. Actually, oh, it is because yeah, people were spitting on cops. I mean, this has been this has been the summer of spitting on cops, but that's not what we call it. Mm-hmm. Okay, breaking news, Alice. Uh uh-uh. uh GSA head Emily Murphy has moved to officially begin transition and give the president-elect Joe Biden the resources to, to transition. Yada, yada, yada. Dear Mr. Biden, as the administrator of the U.S., you have the ability under the, to uh, make certain post-election resources available. So there you go. Joe Biden is uh, getting all the goodies. He gets a gift bag and uh, all the letterhead and everything else starting tomorrow. I think that's good. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's time. The guy won the election. And uh, we go forward. I God knows how pre- Trump will handle it. Um, I mean, so I told you today, and I don't know if you got a chance to look at this or not yet, um, but I have picked up on a signal that I believe shows that Trump is knows that he's not going to be in the White House much longer, uh, which is, do you remember what it is that I told you? No. I said, look at the pictures of Melania getting the Christmas tree and tell oh, me right. if you yes. have ever seen a person look more thrilled about a Christmas tree. She is the happiest person for a hundred miles around. I've never seen Melania Trump smile as broadly as she is in those pictures getting the Christmas tree. So she knows she is not going to be in that town much longer. There's nothing she wants more than to be out of Washington D.C. And I've never, I've literally never seen a person look so happy about a Christmas tree in my life. Right. You know. So, um, that makes me believe that uh, Trump is 
packing up his stuff, pretty much. I, well, yes. I don't think there's an election stealing of right. And about Trump to has happen. Uh, Trump has tweeted Dallas a few minutes ago. I want to thank Emily Murphy at GSA, who mm-hmm. who's in charge of uh, the trade, for her steadfast dedication dedication and loyalty to our country. Country is capitalized for <laughs> God knows why. <laughs> She has been harassed, threatened, and abused, and I do not want to see this happen to her, her family, or employees of GSA. Our case strongly, all caps, continues, we will keep up the good fight, and I believe we will prevail. Nevertheless, in the best interest of our country, country is capitalized. (laughs) I am recommending that Emily and her team do what needs to be done with regard to initial protocols, and I've told my team to do the same. So there you go. There you go. It's on, Alice. That was the silent uh, signing of the pink slip. Yeah, um, it was. I'm definitely still going to win, but we're just going to do right. everything like we're not going to win just in case. Right. I'm definitely going to win, <laughs> but we've absolutely bleep canned the lead of the legal team, disassociated ourselves from her completely. We've like literally never even heard of her right. now at this point. Right. So that's exciting. So this is, if you're a Trump person, I got to tell you, you should be excited. This next tra- chapter for Trump, who knows what he will do? Who knows? I mean, this is so interesting. The people will be able to look back at, at this presidency at some point. The, the thing, so here's what you, this is such a tricky time. There has been no good reporting about good news or accomplishments about the Trump administration from almost all of the media. So you have seen almost no reporting about any accomplishment. That said, Joe Biden is in a quandary now. He's in a pickle because Trump has done so much, certainly with foreign policy. Mm-hmm. He's had so many successes. Right. And some of these successes, successes are directly counter mm-hmm. to Obama-Biden uh, policy that it's going to be interesting to see what Biden does now with what he's been handed because he's been handed something different. Than then it was then he was in possession of four years ago. This Middle East peace stuff is a different animal, right? And it can only be done. It could only have been done in the wake of the Obama Biden um, JCPOA. Is JCPOA the Iran deal? Uh, yeah, I know. You know, and the falling down and in the in, in, in Trump essentially nuking the Iran deal, but you know. Obama's insistence on the Iran deal Mm -hmm. and outreach to Iran was something that isolated these Sunni Muslim countries in the Gulf Arab states, and they had nowhere else to turn. So into the arms of Israel they go, (laughs) you know. Um, And that's one of the factors. There's a bunch of factors to it. But so what does Biden do now? Well, right. I mean, there's a lot of complaints amongst people on the left that the stuff with Israel and making peace with all the Arab states is transactional and no good and, uh, you know, it's not going to last and blah, blah, blah. So presumably they're going to, when it falls apart under Biden, they're going to turn around and say, like, well, it was never going to last under Trump. But at the same time, like, you have Trump making the peace and it falling apart under Biden, if that's what ultimately happens. So, you know, Trump has created some kind of peace there, whether it's fragile or built on a house of cards or whatever you want to say about it. Uh, Biden has to find some way to maintain that or he's the bad guy who lets it fall apart you know that's that's how it goes you know trump came into office with the wars from obama with the syrian refugee crisis and the border crisis and everything else and those aren't there anymore so say what you want about it. isis is one of those things right isis sure israel not being at peace with anyone Mm. sure north korea i mean the list goes on so For better or worse, those fires are out now. And you might not like the way Trump put them out or the way he looked while doing it or whatever. But when the fires, when the dying embers flare back up under Biden, you know, that's going to be on Biden. So Biden's got to find a way to maintain at least as much as Trump has created here. Yeah. Yeah. And it's that'll be very interesting to see. And also, what what tack do they take with China? They certainly probably... Well, I mean, who knows? Who knows? I mean, there's certainly a trade trade deal with China. There, there's the intellectual property challenge is still there, though nominally chipped away. Um, mm-hmm. 
but but that's going to remain. But 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 Trump was uh, with the with the trade war with China was right. was overtly hostile, and Biden has been a very pro China guy. Mm-hmm. But now we've got the cor- coronavirus as well. You would think that there would be more grievances than ever, and perhaps uh, you'd, there'd be more more uh, at least you'd want the appearance of trying to uh, sanction the Chinese in some way. Of course, I mean people. The CCP can say what they want, but uh, there's the thing came from China. We all know it came from China. We all know that China hit it, didn't act, um, persecuted people who tried to warn the world. Um, and so the world knows that all that's true. Now, at this point, it's up to Biden. I mean, people feel that it was racist the way Trump addressed that. Sure. But, you know, it's we know where the virus came from and what China did to spur it along. And it's going to be up to Biden now to find a way to hold China accountable. So whether or not he has the stomach to do that is something that we're going to have to see. Um, I expect him to probably be kind of more hawkish on Russia, I would think. Biden? Yeah. How so? Um, I don't necessarily mean with specific actions as much as I mean just tone-wise. Um... You know, Trump. Trump was really kind of trying to be at peace with Russia, more or less. You know, was was friendly with Putin. I'd say, like on a personal level, the same way he was with Kim Jong Un, that people didn't like. And I think that um, Biden, at least, is going to like assume a more hostile footing with with Russia. Um, I mean, I don't see how he can not with. Um, with the the way the left feels right. about Russia and how they foisted Trump upon us, um. so so and that's going to be interesting. I, certainly, I, I mean Biden will not be able to get. It's it's so interesting because the Trump or administration was so. By the way, that old guy Phil. Uh huh. The there's a hunt for Phil. He's on video everywhere. It's all right. over the place. But well, they have I not would find think him. So I would assume they've gone to the police. Have they not? Yes, 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 yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you're hearing that noise, there's a child trying to... uh, Break into the room. We'll see. So? (laughs) So, um, the other thing is, is that, you know, there is legislation. The um, um, Criminal Justice Reform, the First Step Act, Mm -hmm. that legislation was something that no Democrat would have gotten passed. No Democratic president with right. a with a Republican Senate would right. have gotten passed. You had a Republican president who strong armed senators to pass it. Generally, mm-hmm. conservatives are not fans of criminal justice reform, or, or, or a lot of it. They're not fans of uh, you, you know simply with a few exceptions. Definitely like Rand Paul, R- Mike right. Lee kind of people. Were. Yes, yes, more libertarian bent right. is is for it. But a lot of these, you know. Republicans worked uh, very closely with Democrats in '94 mm-hmm. for that crime bill. Actually, it was kind of a unanimous, <laughs> a unanimous thing by both parties and, and uh, you know local leaders, etc. It'll see what Biden does if there's a you know because we've talked about this. This is going to be a priority of a lot of progressives. A lot of uh, the the squad, the the ever growing squad, is going to want more criminal justice reform and more measures. It done, yeah, police it, but, reform specifically oh, yeah. too. Not just you know sentencing and prison reform, but they want you know actual changes to the way police departments operate. Um, you know, sending psych experts on police calls yeah. and all these things. Um, you know, defunding so-called, dismantling police departments. All right. these kinds of terms that they throw around. And, um, you know, there's there's going to be pressure on Biden to do that. They're tragic, though it is. I don't want to be the bearer of bad news. But there are going to be, during the Biden administration, more police-involved shootings of black men. Possibly black women also, but mm-hmm. more likely black men. Um, because they happen. Because there's police-involved right. shootings of people from time to time. And some of them mm-hmm. will be black, just statistically speaking. Um, and... When that happens, Trump won't be president anymore. Um, 
you know, Trump wasn't really responsible for those to start with. They happened under Obama, too. Uh, most policing decisions are made locally, whether at a county level or a, a municipal level, even a state level sometimes, but mostly county and municipal. Um, and and lots of times in areas that have been run by Democrats and very progressive Democrats for a very long time. But there won't even be Trump now to blame it on that, you know, he's somehow putting some zeitgeist in the air that's making mm -hmm. police officers racist or something. There's not going to be that excuse to fall back on. So what will Biden do? You know, we can't bring police shootings to zero. Right. It's not going to happen. It's there. We're too big a country with too many crimes going on and police activities to to be able to bring our police deaths to zero you know, shooting police shootings of civilians. So so they're going to happen. And so when they happen under Biden, what is the solution going to be? What what can Biden propose that will put a stop to them? I don't know. That's a tough one. And this is a guy who generally has had a very good relationship with the police and the military. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I don't, it's going to be so fascinating to watch. I don't even want to... I'm... I, it, it's such... It's so... I'm, I'm kind of uh, itching to, to see what happens. It, it depends as well. I mean, he's also iced out some Obama people from the administration. Susan Rice has no home in the administration. You know, you know, to listen well, to I don't think I think he knows that he would never get Susan Rice through the Senate confirmation process. Yeah. I mean, sometimes politics is about the fight, you know, um, maybe. But I, I think. And I know in compared to her actual policy missteps too, the Benghazi thing is a little bit trite, but I, I think after the Benghazi thing, like I don't think you can float her to a Republican Congress. <laughs> oh, I think it would be fun, but you're probably right. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean I don't I don't see her getting into the administration. You know? And I think that even like somebody like Kerry, I don't know if you could get him through if it weren't at first something as stupid as climate czar. Right. <laughs> I mean, like, nobody uh, cares right. if, if Carrie's going to be the and climate is, czar. Like, yeah, I don't even know what that, that exactly It's <laughs> it like, just do, do what you usually do, and <laughs> we'll give you a title. Yeah. Oh, the, the yacht is gone. But, John Curry, that brings me to the, the controversy I'm embroiled in, Alice. Oh, On man. Twitter, I'm embroiled in a deep controversy. Mm -hmm. I'm getting attacked and ratioed. Yeah. Horribly. So today, I was actually thinking about this the, when when, Ke when they said that Kerry is going to be the climate czar, <laughs> I, uh, which means he'll be in a government jet plane going around the world. So, but um, <sighs> yeah. I was just thinking. I thought, remember that night when Kerry lost the election? For a while there, they thought that that he had won. I remember, mm -hmm. and then for they were sure that that election was diebold machines. I thought, wouldn't it be interesting if we're bringing somebody into the Oval Office who spent any time suggesting that he had won the election? So I just kind of looked at a quick cursory shot there. Just mm -hmm. John Kerry, whatever. Did he say that he had won the election? And, you know, in Mother Jones or whatever, they said, like, the Kerry people know they've won. But, and, but this little story jumped out at me. It was reported at the time that said NBC News... This is an election morning. This is the day after. Mm -hmm. NBC News. White House claims Bush wins, but Kerry box. November 3rd, 2004. The White House claimed victory in the presidential election Wednesday morning after President Bush won Ohio and Florida, two of the, two of the three big battleground states that were keys to the race. Uh, Senator John Kerry's campaign was unwilling to concede, insisting that he would win Ohio's 20 electoral votes when all the ballots were counted, which might not happen for almost two weeks. So, um, yeah, da, 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 we've waited four years for this victory. We can wait one more night, he told, uh, uh, this is John Edwards, told cheering supporters of in Boston. Um, so they go back to say that, yep, they could take up to two weeks to count all the stuff, whatever. As it turns out, the next day, they carry conceded. Mm -hmm. Right, you know, I saw it. I was, you know, thrilled. It was it was a particularly good night for me that election night because it looked like Bush had won, the Patriots had just won the Super Bowl, and the Sox had just won the World Series. It's like this is a good year, two thousand four. <laughs> um, so I tweeted out just the idea that, like, uh, you know what, there was a moment in time, you that know, the campaign and, was saying this exactly, and NBC News as well. So I tweeted that out. I tweeted out, um, 
John Kerry joins Team Biden. Remember in 2004 when he didn't concede in a campaign plan to hold out for weeks? I actually carefully worded it as well, you know, mm -hmm. when he didn't concede. Remember when he didn't concede, which was the 12 hours or 14 hours, in a campaign planned to hold out for weeks, which I just read it was NBC News reporting. Right. That's a sourced claim with a so an NBC News source from 2004. Exactly. No. <sighs> so it hits the fan. LA Times reporter, <laughs> these other people from me, essentially said stuff like this. He conceded the next morning. This is a false statement. So weird that Tom Shattuck would get something wrong and not retract. Retract? <laughs> retract what? <laughs> hey, do you retract a tweet? Um, you know, somebody says wrong. Um, um, it, there's a bunch of these that are... No, because he conceded the next day. Remember when media wasn't willfully misleading? Um, somebody else says... So all of these people... Right. All I said was that there was a moment... When Kerry mm -hmm. himself didn't concede in that campaign, in the spirit of what I was saying was all this election, conceding, not conceding, this might take one or two weeks stuff, wasn't invented in, in 2020. Just so you know, yeah. it wasn't invented. I wasn't saying that Kerry did exactly what Donald Trump did, is no. doing. No, because he's not. If I was saying that, I would have said that. Right. But he's if not. If you were saying that Kerry didn't concede for weeks and weeks, then you could have tweeted that Kerry didn't see concede for weeks and weeks, which would have been a false statement. Right. And also, <laughs> so. we were all there. We all watched 2004 together, and of course he conceded. Yeah, we know. Are, are they assuming that I think that he still hasn't conceded? Because I didn't put it in the... But they don't... Oh, my God. No, you're saying Trump. You're saying it's the same thing. And no, when Trump's an especially different kind of monster, and I know you're just a Trumper and kids in cages and... So, of course, because it's total confirmation, by they want to believe that that's what I'm doing, the worst possible. No, you're trying to say, no, this is unprecedented. This is carried into it. People telling me, read the article. It says right there. It said, I read the article. I posted the article. You don't have to produce an article as proof that I produced. <laughs> This is I like the person who tells you to use Wikipedia or Google or since right. you appear to be a journalist, a better source. Right. Like, uh, I have a source in my tweet from a respected yeah. news organization that says exactly what I said. Right. So, it, 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 take it up with M. Alex Johnson. I don't know <laughs> where, if he still works there or still doesn't work there. But it's incredible. And then my favorite one is this guy says, hey, Tom, a quick read of the comments below tells me that you're incorrect. Any chance you'll be returning to apologize or maybe give an explanation of what you meant? Quote, won't hold my breath. A quick read of the comments? Yeah, a quick <laughs> read of the comments tells me that these idiots <laughs> want to believe I did something that I didn't. And they're reacting to their own made-up version of right. what I was saying. Mm -hmm. And they want me to apologize for their version. My version didn't say it. Right. It's it's. I just think it's so beautiful because... I mean, it, it just to just like leave it out there as it is. I wouldn't even know how to begin, but this is just how we've all lost. Well, but you can't even react to those things because they're too off base. Like they're responding to something else that they imagine happened that right. didn't happen. So, like, how can you even reason with that? What you're gonna ar go back and argue with them about what your own tweet says? Like, you, how can you explain it better than the tweet says it? There's right. no explanation. I mean, like, just read the tweet. That's the explanation. I don't know. Right. You know, one of the guys from the Daily Times says that this is absolute bold bleep. He 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 uh, conceded the next day. Yeah, I know. I was I was there. We were all there. I was, I was down alive the in two thousand four. Right. I know about it. It's so incredible. Just this this willing to want to yeah. believe. Anyway, so I'm enjoying it. Unfortunately, it's died down. I was hoping that maybe some bigger names would jump on and try to. Yeah. No. I mean, but I think most of the bigger names too have learned what you're saying, which is that you can't reason with this. Right. These no, no, I don't want to be defended. I want to I want to see the bigger names oh, attack. Yeah. But yeah, I mean you can't the the stuff is so unhinged that the left is saying right now that you can't even like engage. It's too out there. And they're like I don't know, something similar happened to me this weekend cuz I tweeted something about how you know, something that I believe is 100% true, that, like, part of the reason you see media not really caring that much about what Trump's doing is because they had to put up with insane, baseless stuff about Russia for four years. Right. And I had a bunch of people tweeting me the Mueller report and tweeting ah! me all this stuff, like, about what Russia did. And I eventually, like, I followed up with a second tweet, and I was like... 
people who are replying to me with the Mueller report don't get it. Like, yeah, sure, right. Russia did something. Yeah, voter fraud's real. Yeah, machines, like, whatever. I don't know. But it, it doesn't change the election result. And then they jumped on me more. And I was like, I give up on these people. Because they, they were like. They jumped on you more. They were like, citing- so you're saying voter fraud is real? Are right. you crazy? And I'm like, are you? Like, that's. I was eye rolling at the voter fraud is real. Like, but. Right. They Whatever. jumped on you like, more citing the Mueller report, which is the bound version <laughs> of the falsehoods that cause all the problems. Yeah. They're just, it's so unhinged. I mean, and the people tweeting me, like, the video of Trump saying, yep. Russia, are you listening? Like, that proves oh, something. Jesus. Like, oh, I Jesus. mean, I can't, like, I don't know. Russia, are you listening? Can you find me uh, Tom's driver's license? Because we can't find it right now. Like, see, I asked Russia for help. I colluded with Russians. Like, what? It it doesn't work like that. Like, I don't know. But I give up. I give up because they're responding to something completely different than what happened because they're so unmoored from reality. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to get to a moment here. It is a big day for... Um, Andrew Cuomo, if you didn't know already, Andrew Cuomo has won an Emmy. That's right. Today was presented. He's America's mayor. Oh, sorry, governor, remember. Remember what he did to soothe the country. Last spring, when the virus was new and out of control, and the people of New York were frightened at its relentless spread, one man took it upon himself to use technology to spread reliable information and tell citizens what to do. I realize that you're hearing this already and heading directly for the liquor cabinet, but we'll get through this together. It's almost over. Governor Cuomo's daily press conferences were a whole new dimension in public education. Oh, jeez. He informed, he demanded, and he calmed people down. So listen, his daily press conferences, at first I liked them too, but the problem was is that they were paired with the action of the administration. The action of the administration uh, it called for installing sick COVID patients into very vulnerable uh, uh, dwellings, like senior citizens' homes, veterans' places, etc. And that caused the annihilation of tens of thousands of people. That's I, He's not a murderer, but his incompetence... Um, it was on display during this crisis. Yes, he had great conversations about his daughter and the boyfriend and this and that, but no, this was not... And for these people to be celebrating this guy is freaking crazy. Crazy. But no, they went all in, big montage, and it, but shortly after this guy talks, the music starts. It is a frightening time on every level. At the same time, it is this much time. It is this much time. Is it three months? Is it six months? Is it nine months? This would all be great stuff if, in reality, people weren't dying by the tens of thousands, over 30,000. I don't know if they're up to 35,000 yet. And that's policy. Policy. I don't know. But it's this. But these Hollywood morons, Emmy people from around the world, of course, all that matters is the look and feel. Look at, he talked to us like a parent would. It's so soothing, especially considering the jerk in Washington. This is so soothing and comforting. Time. This is part of a montage, by the way. You're gonna, the music's going to hit in a second. You're probably going to throw up. We will get through this much time. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Asks up. I'm going to give you an overview of where we are today. Total positive cases, 2,300. 4,000. Now is up to 10,000. The rate of new infections is doubling about every three days. Sounds good with the music. We lose 2,753 lives on 9-11. We've lost over 7,000 lives to this crisis. That is so... That's just in the nursing homes, by the way, Mr. Nursing Home Policy. So shocking and painful and breathtaking. I can't... I don't. This is pure, pure pop propaganda. They want to believe this, too. That's right. He did the best job. He did the best job. I don't even have the words for it. Behind every one of those numbers is an individual, is a family, is a mother. Is a... I'm not going to put you through much of this. Here's the crescendo. We have done a full 180. We wore masks, we socially distanced, we closed down, and we stopped the curve. Stop the curse, uh, curve, sorry, but flatten the curve. 
There you go. Looking at it right now, it doesn't seem to be too flattened to me. If at the uh, at the at the height there were twelve thousand cases uh, daily cases, it looks like a day. New York is back up to about six thousand, just under six thousand cases a day. And he went around saying he flattened the curve. He sold posters. He's on a book tour right now about how he beat the virus. He didn't beat the virus. It went and killed everybody. That it could easily at the beginning based on his uh, large of them i don't want to make him into a murderer and i don't want to use the virus the, the virus just to be i know everybody else everybody's doing it just to be political but he doesn't get a prize this guy he effed this thing up jesus crazy what an honor and pleasant surprise during these hard times I yeah celebrities uh put together a little montage for him to my governor this is spike lee the governor of empire state Andrew Cuomo. Congratulations, Andrew, De Niro. on your much-deserved Founders Award. Governor Andrew Rosie Cuomo, Perez. you are the man. What? I was trying to think of ben Stiller. something that I could say to you that would uh, be funny, and so I called your brother Chris, who could not understand why you were getting an Emmy since he's the one on television. In the darkest stage of the pandemic, your daily briefings live Billy from Crystal. New York gave us hope, gave us clarity, gave us the truth, and gave us something that we were not getting from Washington leadership in the midst of this storm andrew cuomo billy joel became the nation's governor people across the country tuned into this press conferences every day daily i was watching his press all right we get you i'm not going to put you through any more of that you get it you get it <laughs> oh afterwards afterwards this guy an actor named richard kind who you would probably recognize he used to be on uh, mad about you in the 90s a guy named richard kind an actor he gets on stage he's supposed to intro the next person but he says tells us cuomo um this cuomo um diddy first and i don't understand it you tell me if this makes sense to you let me tell you something interesting about me and watching governor cuomo i've never told anybody this so i've decided to tell it internationally right every morning i get up i do my exercises and i would make a breakfast of toast avocado tomato lemon juice cup of coffee and i would sit down and i already not my kind of guy um i'm bothered by a lot of what i just heard that's fine i'm fat i'm not allowed to judge food i think by the rules um but t toast avocado lemon juice a tomato jesus god I would watch the governor i did that for five weeks he watched the governor everybody he'd make his avocado toast with tomato and lemon and watch the governor every morning for five weeks I haven't done it since. Isn't that weird? Ever since I got out of the apartment, I just and watching him, it it brought it back. And he does it. It does reflect the theme of what tonight is: that he united New Yorkers, he united the country, and obviously, as as told by uh, uh, our president, it even united the world. And uh, I am grateful to him. President of the Emmys, that. by the way, not president of the United States. So he used to make the avocado toast with the tomato and the lemons, etc. Every day for five weeks. And now since he's been gone and out and free and out of his apartment, he doesn't do it anymore. Thanks for sharing that, Richard. That was something that needed to be aired to the international community. Oh, goodness. <laughs> this is this is more... Remember Jenny Durkin? She's the... Um, she's the mayor of Seattle. She We were talking about Chaz and all that stuff. She was front and center in the news, and um, and they're all doing it. They're all saying it. It's it's so it's so repetitive and old. And I was on with Jerry Kelly this morning, and we talked about it. And there's just something about the way you know it's now it's mainstreamed and it's normalized that we have a governor, a governors, elected leaders all over the place, telling us what we're going to do for Thanksgiving breathlessly saying i know you want to do this and see your family but if you want to see them alive then you'll do the right thing and you'll mask up and no thanksgiving no multiple crock pots no multiple people touching the spoons no singing no uh loudly shouting everybody six feet apart no doing this no doing that whatever so it's never ending now they all say it as if it's something that they should be saying as if we don't want to live and it would be something, and I understand that, that a lot of folks, you know, there's the Phil and Ashburn him, Hills, he he is sure that, that 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 this 
virus is alive and well because people don't wear masks. And that's where the, the dividing line is. And people feel that, like, that, that this mask, if had everybody just been good, then the virus would have gone away. And politicians are telling us more and more. That's right. If you just follow the, can't be socially distant. I mean, you have to be socially distant. You can't be around people. You can't be yelling loudly or singing. You can't, um, you have to wear a mask constantly. You have to do all this stuff. And that's, those are all the rules, no matter what. And that's what's going to get us through this thing. That's what we're told. And there's no doubt that those things are a factor. But we are told absolutely that those things are the things that get us through this. Because if not, that you could die or you can have somebody else die. Now, we've seen all these be belied by the acts of these politicians with Gavin Newsom at the at the restaurant called French Na Laundry in Napa. I can't imagine a more DB <laughs> existence or, uh, you know, Mecca than something called that in that place. I'm never going to Napa. I don't care. Yeah, I'm never going. If I win 100 tracks of um, hectares of land in Napa, I'm never going there. I don't want anybody talking to me about wine country or having a special wine or a Merlot. I don't like the movie Sideways. I don't like – I'm never doing that. <laughs> Freaking Napa. But you just can't get away from the fact that that's it's so hypocriti hypocritical. Do these politicians believe what they're saying? Do the elected leaders believe what they're saying? Or do they not believe what they're saying? And again and again, the messaging... Thankfully, they're such cowards that we're shown the truth. Because when other situations come in, when other events take front and center, suddenly they pocket the virus. They put it away. Mm -hmm. So Jenny Durkin of Seattle, former, um, um, former host city of Chaz... <laughs> A.K.A. Chop. A.K.A. Chop, the independent country <laughs> over the summer, which was uh, policed by a warlord. <laughs> Did they follow name COVID like, guidelines? Name least? like Rick. But anyway, well, uh, we're going to get to that. This is Jenny Durkin telling us, by the way, that uh, Thanksgiving is over. Visiting your family at home this Thanksgiving, unfortunately, could mean visiting them in the ICU by Christmas. Exactly. Yep. Not going to happen. That is over. The days of Thanksgiving are, are over. Do you understand? The days of Thanksgiving are over. Now, just a few months ago, when the streets of Seattle were filled with protesters, when an autonomous country was built in the middle of Seattle, there were some people had masks, some people didn't have, but there was certainly no social distancing. It was caution to the wind. Where was Jenny Durkin on that? So I think it's really important to always reiterate how important protests are um, wow. and the right to challenge government. And the protest against ICE is a righteous cause. Um, we've seen. Yeah, I mean, you can go out and risk your health and die if it's if it's against our immigration authorities. Sure. Yeah. In this administration, really attack our communities, our immigrant and refugee communities here in Seattle and. We've done a lot, and I, I stand with them on raising that concern. Get out there! <laughs> Get out there! Over the last week, thousands across Seattle have come together to raise their voices, share their anger and grief, and to demand justice. And I want to tell you that you need to get back out of the streets and please uh, socially distance and, and do something um, with your mask on and don't be out there shouting and screaming because I'm trying to save your lives. Right, Jenny? I am thankful for these demonstrators for oh. sharing their voices, for demanding more from all of us in a position of power, including myself and the chief of police. I want to talk a little bit about last night. Oh, she's going to condemn the mass gathering. Oh. It's a, a, a health hazard for everybody. Yesterday, thousands gathered, marched, and protested into the very early morning hours. Chief Bess and SPD have tried to make operational adjustments every day to allow those peacefully gathered to march across the city and to gather in Capitol Hill. I want to express again my deep thanks to the protesters and community <laughs> activists who have showed again the power of peaceful collective action. There you go. Peaceful collective action for me when I want it, not for you this Thanksgiving. Who knows? Who knows, Alice? 
Um, so you can find us on Twitter at Burn Barrel Pod, Facebook.com slash Burn Barrel Podcast. You can find us on Parlor Burn Barrel Podcast. You can uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. You can watch the video there, Tom Shattuck's Burn Barrel. Um, choose your favorite podcast app of choice. You can stream. You can like our videos on YouTube. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Say la vie.